Eventually, we're going to land in Psalms 116, and uh, the notes will, will be up on the on the on the board, and uh, and uh, we're excited about that. We're in a series about victory, right? And I'm just simply calling it "Victory is Mine." How many of you want to make that declaration of faith today that says victory can be mine, and it is mine? Now, I, I want to give you an opinion on something today. My, my wife and I, we used to lot, watch a lot of news. Do I got any news watchers here? You watch the news all the time. You know everybody. You can name all those people. That's wonderful. Well, let me tell you, I got tired of watching the news. Do I have anybody that's tired of watching the news? Hello? Hello. Well, that came to me, and so we just kind of dropped off watching the news, and I'll tell you, this is going somewhere, all right. Uh, many years ago, news agencies used to give you what, what were the facts, am I right? You watch the news, and you got the facts. All of that has ceased, in my opinion, all right. Uh, you can no longer obtain an unbiased reporter who just gives the facts. I don't care what news agency you watch, when you get the facts, along with the facts, you get what else? The spin, am I right? Uh, and if there is anything that the American public has understood is that the American media is trying to interpret the facts for us. If that's a revelation to you, well... Uh, Merry Christmas, all right? But uh, it's, it's a simple concept, all right? How many of you are with me, all right? There are the facts, the actual events that happened, that occurred, and then there is how the person interprets the facts, the way they put the spin on the story. Now, I know you're probably thinking to yourself, I don't have any idea why this pastor is talking about this. Uh, what does that have to do with my spiritual victory? H how does this affect me today? Well, listen, there are the facts of your life. Am I right? And there is how you interpret the facts of your life. How you interpret those facts will many times bring you to a place where you sense victory in your life. Or you can interpret those facts in a way where you come to a place where you are overwhelmed with a feeling of despair. Facts and interpretation of facts. All right? And let me just say this this morning, that what happens to you in life is not nearly as important as the way you interpret what has happened to you in life. I'm not going to use the word spin because that has a negative connotation. In fact, the crux of this message is today that I want to teach you how to let God interpret the facts of your life, all right? Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, most of you have heard it. Uh, if you haven't, it's a very common verse. It says this, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. How many of you love God today? Amen? Uh, then the scripture says, all the facts of your life are working together for a higher purpose uh, if you love God, and it goes on to say, to those who are called according to His purpose purpose. Victory comes when you are able to back up from any situation in your life and go to God in prayer, listening to His voice. And we need to learn how to, and I'm going to use this today, pray through our troubles, talking to God, especially about the things that are difficult, hard, testing, trying, negative things. We've got to go to the Lord in prayer, understanding that He will work all those things out to our good. Now we have to understand this as well, that so many times in life we have no control over what happens to us. Circumstances happen all around us. Unexpectedly things go on and we don't have any control over that. But I'm going to tell you what you do have control over. You have control over the choice to believe that God is a good God, to believe that God can interpret your facts of your life in a way and use them for your benefit. So I've got a question for you this morning as we begin today, all right? Who is putting the spin on the facts of your life? 
I want to give you some examples today of people who would try to put the spin on the facts of your life. The first group, obviously, we've touched on it already, is the media. And how many of you know when I say media, I'm not just talking about newscasts. I'm talking about television, movies, social media, Facebook, all of that stuff out there. Uh, and let me just give you some interesting facts about television. Did you know that there are actually still homes in America who have what that has widescreen TVs, but they don't have indoor plumbing? That's a fact. All right. 85% of Americans watch television every single day. In most homes, the average is that the television set is on seven hours and two minutes every single day. And I can guarantee you that the media, the television, the news, the movies, the shows, they're all trying to interpret the facts of your life. Am I right? How many of you believe that today? Jesus put it like this, Matthew chapter 6. He said, your eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your body will be full of darkness. Now, he's not giving us a lesson in ophthalmology, all right? He's ta not talking about the physical. He's talking about a spiritual principle that what we behold has an impact on us. What we look at with our eye gate is going to affect us. There's a connection, if I could put it like this, there's a connection between our cornea and our character. Hello? And so we've got to understand that the whole media system is trying to put a spin on your life. Can I just give you an example or two today? Let's just say that you're happy with your car. How many of you are happy with the car you're driving, all right? I mean, it may not, hey, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you when I get happy with my cars when the payments are all done, hello? And do I got a witness in the house? Uh, you know, the payments are done, and now I don't have to do that anymore, right? And you can be there enjoying your automobile. You, you know, you don't have any more bills, and it might break down every once in a while, but you're content with it. You're happy with your car until you turn on the television set and, and the media starts to reinterpret the facts of your life. Hello? The advertisement comes on and it says something like this. You deserve a better car than you're driving. Before, you were just like, you get in that car and you'd say, thank you, Jesus. I don't have any more payments on this car. But after a few of those commercials and after stopping by an auto's place a time or two, now all of a sudden you walk up to the car and you see the dent and you see the worn out carpeting and you see how many miles it has on it. Hello. And all of a sudden you're not content anymore. You're not grateful anymore. You're getting in the car and you're saying, God, God, I can't believe that me, your servant, has to drive this pile of junk. God, when are you going to bless me with a new car? How many of you know that what happened was that the media reinterpreted your life? Are you tracking with me this morning today? And I'm just here today to tell you that we can't allow the media to influence us. Right? Well, I don't have the iPhone 10. Some of us remember when there were no iPhones. Hello? Were you content with uh, Some of y'all can remember party lines. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. <laughs> There's another group that will have an effect on your life that tries to put spin on there, and that's friends and family. Now, I'll tell you, if you've got friends and family that know Jesus and they tell you good things out of the Word and they bring you godly wisdom and godly counsel, how many of you know that's a good thing, right? But there's sometimes we work with people or we know people and we make close relationships with them and they put a spin on our life that really doesn't need to be there. Let me read a scripture. It says 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 15, 33 says this, Don't be deceived. Evil communications corrupt good character, right? 
right? And I've seen it time and time again. Take, for example, a guy that he goes to work and he was very happy. He's married. He goes to work and it's not long before some of his buds at work and he's married. They're all single. And so they start saying, hey man, let's go out after, after work and let's, let's go shoot some pool and let's hang out. And it isn't long as he's there, he begins to hear their comments that they talk about. He begins to hear them saying different things and, and pretty soon that begins to influence his thinking and it begins to put an interpretation on his life and pretty soon he says to himself you know what I just I wish I wasn't married I wish I was back when I was single I could I could just have this or do that and it isn't long before he goes out and he oh how many of you know if you're looking the devil will provide somebody hello and pretty soon that guy goes out and he has an affair how many of you realize what happened his friends interpreted his life for him well then how many of you know the wife always finds out tell your neighbor the wife always finds out am i preaching good this morning the wife always finds out well she she she's in that same situation instead of going to god with her pain instead of going god to god with her hurts and hang-ups and, and, and heartaches what she does is, is she goes to her friends at work and she says i can't believe it my husband cheated on me and you know what they give her this kind of stupid advice that sounds like this well if he cheated on you why don't you just go out and cheat on him okay I'm just here today to tell you that people will try to interpret your life if you let them oh I'm preaching good and a minute ago y'all were laughing and saying amen now everybody's quiet we're gonna move on here today the third person is Satan right he wants to put a spin on your life he wants you to believe his version of the facts. Uh, and if you don't think that we live in a spiritual world today, you are greatly mistaken. Let me just tell you about Satan for a moment. Some people speak Chinese. Some people speak Vietnamese. But Satan speaks Lyonese. In other words, he speaks lying with ease. All right? In fact, it's his native language. I'm not making this stuff up. John 8, 44. This is what Jesus said. When he, Satan, lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. And I'll tell you, he wants to put a spin on your life. He wants to tell you all kinds of stuff. That's why, my friend, you've got to stay in the Word of God so you'll recognize what those lies are. That's why you've got to come on Wednesday night, hello, and train your ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying so He can lead you and guide you and direct you because Satan wants to put his spin on the events of your life. In fact, I believe that there's a constant battle going on in the spiritual realm over the interpretation of of the events of your life. God, of course, wants to, you to interpret them in such a way that will bring you esteem and joy and peace. But the enemy of your soul wants you to interpret them in a way that will destroy you. Let me I remind you who Satan is. He is the accuser of the brethren. He is a deceiver. Hello? And he hates you with all hatred that there is. And he'll say something like this. He'll say, I know what you did back then. And and yes, I know you went to Jesus and you asked for forgiveness, but don't you know that you're a no good for nothing? And he'll start, he'll start berating you. He'll start accusing you. He'll try to bring shame into your life. He'll tell you you don't ever need to try to do anything for God. Don't try to be a witness. Everybody will find out who you used to be. You, you, you could never be used in the ministry. You might as well uh, give up on serving God. You see what Satan's trying to do? He's trying to put a spin on your life but how many of you know would how many of you would say with me i'm not going to believe his satan's lies amen and what i declare and what i believe needs to happen in the kingdom of god that we go and the only one that gets to interpret our life the only one and he, let me tell you something god does not put spin on somebody's life he interprets our life in the proper way come on amen he's got to be the one 
Well, you say, Pastor, you don't get it. I did sin. I did mess up. Let me tell you something. Just tell your neighbor, welcome to the human race. Hello? Every single person on the planet is in that exact same boat. Every single one of us have fallen short. We've all missed the mark. Amen? And so let me tell you, how. maybe I told you how Satan would spin it. Here's how God would spin it. He would say something like this. Son, daughter, my grace is sufficient for you. 